So that's what they're explaining with this thing. Just give me a minute. Okay, Mr. Sherman. Can you see my screen? Hello? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I was explaining what a preprocessor is, and I said that preprocessor processes or the compilation process takes four stage and the first stage is the preprocessor and i said that the preprocessor is a text substitute program it's a program and some specialist in programming says that preprocessor process or stage is not part of the compilation and we're going to see why it's said so so first in the compilation in the preprocessor stage is the directive in our program, whenever we run our program, especially in, let's see, we start with hashtag include, let's say, um, standard input output dot h, and then we close it. Now, this guy here is known as the preprocessor directive. And what this guy does is that it tells the preprocessor, preprocessor, add files from standard I input output dot h and how is preprocessor going to know where standard input output dot h is by following this ankle bracelet now this brand, um ankle bracelet here will tell it where it will find standard input output dot h now this bracelet here re represents standard library it tells the preprocessor this guy here is in the standard library so go to the standard library and get whatever you want. Now we include this because of this guy here, mm -hmm. the printf guy. Because of this guy here, because of the printf function, we include the standard input output h library. Now without this direction, our compiler will throw an error whenever we try to compile a file without the standard input output h. Now, when the preprocessor gets to the standard input output, does it, what does it do? What it does is that, first of all, it will pick everything in that path. It will pick every, absolutely everything in standard input output.h and add it to your file. That's why it does it through directing the compiler to standard input output and then bring everything into your code, expanding your code before you know, running the compilation. Now, after it does all these things, that's your .c file will be called .i, and that's where compilation starts. Am I still in the score? Yeah, 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 yeah. Hello? Yes, you are. OK, fine. So that was by the way. OK, now, there are two ways of using the hash include um, standard input output .h file. There are two ways of using this um, hash include. So the second way of using it is this guy here. So if you see something like include, include um, let's say, um, let's say run dot, let's say dot p. Let's say run dot p, something like this. Now what this guy here is telling us, Hello. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I have um, a red wavy line under my run dot p. Why? Because I don't have this file anywhere in my folder. So the ID is telling me that you don't have this file anyway. But I'm going to create this file and then we'll do some practicals. Okay. So now the reason I did not put the anchor bracelets or braces here is that I am telling preprocessor, preprocessor, you will find this wrong run point points p or run dot p in my folder in my local machine so whenever i want to tell uh, preprocessor you find this thing in my local machine 
I'll use the the quotation mark, the double quotation mark. I'll tell it you find it in my machine. But whenever I want, I tell it I want to tell it you find this code. Let's say you find it in the standard library. I'll use the ankle bracelets, ankle braces. Whatever you call it. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 I would like us to actually see what happens when, when we run a file and maybe stop it at the preprocessor stage. Can we still remember how we are going to stop a file at the preprocessor stage? Hello? Include dash C. Include dash huh? Dash C. Dash C. I'm sorry, before you finish, on your printer, if you're forgetting your separator and then you don't have the semicolon to terminate that statement. Thank you. To verify the end of statement, rather. Hello, you don't have the return type. Hello. Hey. Okay, so I was asking for, okay, somebody said that C, right? Hello? Yeah. I was... Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, having a serious problem there, let me see. So 
sorry about that. Please. Please, am I still on this call? I don't know. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. still in the meeting. Still in the meeting. Um, listen, do you have a problem? Is there an issue? Oh, I think it's a network. Listen, are you there? Um, okay, you guys, don't panic. Just give her a minute. <clears throat> I just hold on a minute. Let's see if she's going to join us back. So, okay, probably she's going to join back. It was definitely a network. So, um, so before she joins back, let's just keep ourselves busy with some questions. I believe she was asking one question the other time that, uh, what is the, how do you compile a C file just for it to stop after the people say so? You just want to, stop at the people, uh, people, uh, people session stage. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> you just want to stop at the people session stage without compiling. What is the, how do you compile the file? What is the um, flag option accompanying to, to that that can help you compile a file, a C file, and stop at the people session stage? Anybody? It's something you've done before. I think that was your first um, project on C. Okay, someone said GC flag C. Is that correct? Is that correct? Is that correct? No. No, okay. What do you yes, it's flag is flag minus E. Okay. All right. Okay, that's it. I'm just give me a minute. So um I'm not sure if the uh, resource person is going to come back. So like I said, if you don't if you've forgotten all these commands, there's a way you can check. You know, this one is just an option flag that is added to the GGC command, which is going to like, um, probably, probably are trying to do something. You know, GGC comes with other flags, comes with so many flags. Okay, you can just look up the manual. You can just look up at the manual for GGC to see how you can compile Oh, what are the options flag that are complete with the GCC compiler? Okay, so that's just it. Just run on your terminal, just run man. It stands for manual, then followed by any command that you want to look up at the option flag, then you will see various of meanings to it. So, um, okay, 
at this point, before while we wait for her to join back, so I'm just going to continue with some basic explanation. Probably we are going to like um. Uh, so I will probably we are going to like pastelize some things. Probably she's going to join back later. So now we're saying which of these things? Are, we're saying um she was saying something about the prepossessing a uh, uh, prepossessor. That is a program. That's the first probably the first um, stage of the compilation process. You know, when you want to, uh, when you are compiling, the file goes through four basic, four steps. Okay, four stages, let me put it like that. That's the preprocessing stage, the compilation stage, the, who wants to help me with the third one? Assembler. Okay, the assembly stage, and finally, the what? The linker. The linking stage. So, what the preprocessor is doing, that's like the very first um, stage, okay? And that is where, that's the beginning of this, what we call the, um, the uh, there's what we call the preprocessing directives, okay? That's when you talk about the header file, the, um, probably, most times, when you talk about all preprocessor commands, comes with the ash symbol. Anyway, you see ash something, that's a preprocessor. Uh, that's a piece of preprocessor that a command. Okay, that's a preprocessor command. So ash something, ash this, ash that, and they are basically different um, piece of preprocessor directives, and they are divided um, mainly into four types. We have the macros. You can just um, read up on the bot. We are going to pascalize all of this, all of this saying. We have the macros. We have the file inclusion. We have the um, um, the conditional compilation. That is when you have um, something like um, all this um, guiding of header file. That is if not defined and those kind of conditional processor uh, conditional compilation. Then we have what to call other directives. Okay, so you can just look up on all these directives. There are so many things that you can do with a processor directives. Okay, so now she was talking about the one she was actually practicalizing with us is the uh, that's the file inclusion. That's the file inclusion, and basically, there are two types of file inclusion. Is that you are including the header that's um, the standard file that's file inclusion you means the header file basically so you are trying to like include one file or the other so you are either including the words the header uh, the standard header file or you are including what we call the user defined files that's where you use the quote Okay, so I'm just going to probably, if this is the only thing we do, but let's just start with the file inclusion. So I'm just going to start sharing my screen. I'm just, I'm actually wanting some things ever. Don't worry. Uh, got you guys. So even, oh, sorry, I've not started sharing my screen. I've opened up my time now. <laughs> So uh, with what I've said so far, is anybody finding any of the terminologies I've been using quite um quite um different or or quite um something you've not heard before? Yes, I'm hearing some new terms from your mouth. Yes, yeah, yes, don't worry. I'm just we'll break it down in the layman. They will break it down in the layman language. Just don't worry about that. So, um, like I was saying, we have the file inclusion. That's you are either in, you are definitely inclusion. That means you are including file. And what kind of file can you include in your program? That's what the header file. And the header file can be the standard file or the what the user defined file. So I'm just going, and you are already aware of that already. You've been through all of that already. We are not going to waste too much of our time on file inclusion so um sorry hmm. I don't like this 
Hello, Mr. Bilton? Yes. Ah, uh, so what, what am I hearing? I just got an info. What's happening? What's happening? Let me know, Jim. Uh, I don't know what happened. We just lost her and she hasn't been back for quite a while. So I just said I should just um, keep them busy before she comes back. Okay, so where are we now? Are you? Are, did she did she show her outline? Uh, she was talking about file inclusion. She was just that's what okay. I I just picked up from there. Okay, okay, finish that. What, what if she does not come back for any reason? Can, can, do you? Okay, just finish what you're doing. If she does not come back, uh, take it off from there. <clears throat> You can just take it off from here since you are just going to take it off anyway, so that won't just cause any kind of confusion. Okay, I just I just arrived. <laughs> I just arrived right now. Let me get inside and grab my system. Uh, <clears throat> uh, just do something. Do something for the next few minutes. Right. Okay. <clears throat> so concerning the file inclusion, I was talking about. That's where you have to include your header file. That's basically the rating you will include in a C program. And header file is either you are including the standard um, header file or you are, is, or you are including the user defined what header file. Okay, let me just, I usually call it like that. So, uh, as she was doing the other time, so let me just do this. I don't know whether she was going to just uh, like having a this thing. Uh, so let me just go to court. What you call Court nine. Uh -huh. So maybe, okay, I don't have that. So let me just um, VI into, let me just call it um, prep. Let's see. So now, when you talk of the standard, we already know what the standard of the file looks like. How we can what? How we can? Oh, nice to underscore. Okay, yes. How we can make use of the standard error file? And when I say this is what we mean by file inclusion. So. This is how you. This is how the processor sense that okay, you are trying to what include a specific kind of file, and that is you just writing um, hash include. So this is what we call. This is a type of what the processor directory. That means what you are trying to what include a file in your what in your program. And what kind of file can this goes with? Is, is basically what your header files. You cannot think, I don't think you can include any other file apart from header file with this words, with this or command. Okay, so now how do you include? There are basically just two ways to include header files. You either include it with what this angle bracket. If you are including with angle bracket, that means what you want to what include what um, the standard header file, or another way is to include with. This guy called what? Uh, this is your double quotes. Okay, that means you are trying to what? Include the user defined what? Header file. And what we go here is your what? The file name, basically. That's the file name that you defined. Okay, and your file name that you actually defined, we actually what? We end with what? Dot H. Okay. Um, then your standard um, for the one that has the Square uh, the angle braces you go with you either have it as what stdio.h. We have so many standard on libraries, standard on files. We have the string.h and the likes of them. So now, if you are including this during the pre processing stage, that's if you are including this during the pre processing stage, once the what the once this is what was the pre processor sense that you've used one of its command. That means you are using the file inclusion command. Then to go that okay, what kind of file inclusion? What kind of uh, inclusion, uh, inclusion are you doing here? Okay, you are trying to what include what a header file. This is how it sends it. And header files comes with um, I don't know. It's not actually in your system, but it comes when you those um, libraries comes when you install 
the GGC commands. Uh, yeah, when you install the GGC command on your computer, it downloads those what those standard C libraries, those the stdio.h, the string.h, the string add, and the likes of them, all the what, all the direct, all the defined, the standard um, files that, as well as C is concerned, the GCC compiler comes with all those what packages, it comes with any packages, okay? So this GCC command will definitely go and look for wherever this file was saved inside your what inside your computer when you install the GCC, com uh, the GCC compiler, okay? But now when you are, when it is this guy in line three, and you have this, once the, once this command sense that you use a double quotes, that means what you have this file in the same directory where you are compiling from, okay? That means going to look for this guy in the same directory where you are compiling from. That means and what continue with what with the program. Okay, and continue with whatever the program is. I don't want to like um take too much of our time. Um I don't know if um Topman is ready to take charge. I don't want to go too far. Okay. Trying to so I hope you, you understand the file inclusion now. I hope the file inclusion is clear. Yes. Okay, very good. Yes, it is. And there are other there are other or people say so directories that I mentioned. Can someone remind me of one? If you have a good memory. I made mention of four. This is one. <laughs> what are the other three? Anybody? Yes, Anybody we have compiler. No. Nah, that macro, wasn't what I did. Macro, uh, Thank you very much. Macros. That's a kind of, that's another type of what the people say so uh, directive, directive, uh, directive. So okay. macro, macro do you, macro what? Macros. It is called macros. Okay. 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 Don't worry. The All boss right. top man is going to do a very good job on how to, how to what you need to understand with what macros. Okay, so does anybody remember another one that I mentioned? A very okay. Let me give you a hint. You mentioned conditional uh, mm -hmm. compilation. Yes, that's the conditional compilation. That's where you have the if not defined, uh, if uh, those end if and the kind of stuff like that. <coughs> Include that. Uh, um, yeah. Is someone saying something? I said include guards. What you're explaining? Include. This include guards. doing. What is that what doing? Doing? I should um, include what? Please, Apple, Apple to summarize all the four in the in call message. Okay. Okay. So I'm just going to help you guys to type it all out. So we have basically four. So the first one is we talk about macros. As a, okay, let me just use on catalog. So macros. What what am I typing? So macros. Then we talk about file inclusion. Then we talk about what's the other one? Conditional. Conditional compilation. Conditional. Okay, Topman is getting ready. Compilation. And then we talk about then the other categories we have, we just say other directives. Okay, because those other directives you have, you can print the the name of the file you're actually working on. They are they are defined. I think they call it defined on directives. Okay, we have on defined when once you talk about once uh, Topman starts. So directives, directives. Okay. Those are basically the four that I know of. So others, others, or other type of directory that are not what these guys are being what said here. Yeah. So
So like I said, the conditional directive is just the, where you have the if not defined and add and if, okay? Those are basically the query, the processor commands that you have under the word, the conditional words compilation. The other directives include the undefined, defined, um, I think we have the hash or pragma and the likes of them. So um, I want to ask a quick question before I hand over to Topman fully. Okay. If you remember what I said, what's, um, how do you know a preprocessor directive? What is the main thing that points a preprocessor directive? What is the main thing? When you see this thing, you know that what's okay, this is a preprocessor directive. Anybody? Somebody? I mentioned? I think okay, so the hash, hash include. Hash, hash include. No, not hash include. Chobela got it okay. right, just hash. They all begin with hash. Okay, they all begin right. with hash. So anyway, you see hash right. begins something, you know that is a what? A preprocessor directive. So then you can now categorize them with other kind of directive that you have the hash include, the hash defined, the hash on def, and the if not defined, defined and the likes of them. Okay, so top one, are you ready for these guys? All right, all right. Yeah. Come back, can you hear me? Please. Yes, stop sharing now. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Um preprocessor. Preprocessor. Now we've learned that um uh, okay, I think I want to share my screen now. I I I need to do something that may appear magical to some of us. Um so I will share a part of my screen. Show it up. Mm. Uh, uh, Mr. Brody, you have access to my. You still have access to my. My whiteboard, right? Uh, yeah, I should. should. Then you have to uh, like um send the link again. So yeah, sure. Okay, I uh, you've not. I need to be. Don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. Let me just look for it in my jamboard. I should be able to see it here. Which one of them? What is the please add 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 as a cost? Add as a cost. Add okay, 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 okay. My right. share my screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry about that. I'm just going to where is yourself? Okay. Yeah, done. So okay, I'm saying okay, yes, I still have access. I think it's the one with um W Q S N Z C have right. <laughs> I'm not sure. But, uh, okay, yes. I'm, I'm sharing again. Uh, um, follow me. Share right. The one that you wrote some kind of uh, people processing compiling. Okay, you have access to you have access to this one. So check. You can see this right. Try writing on it, let's see. Okay, I've seen this, I've seen share permissions. Right, let's see. Right on, right on the board. Nothing is happening, what's happening? Are you still in the call or is it me? Oh. I can't hear anything again. Confirm. Yeah, I'm here, I'm here, I'm back. Sorry, okay. I closed the wrong tab. So hold on, let me go to the okay, I can see you. You join. So just write something on the screen. Let me, look, let me just confirm that you can. <laughs> That's I didn't say she would draw your glitch. It's okay. It's okay. So you are going to be operating the screen. I want to I want to drop a question. So why they okay. are trying to be operating there? I'm sharing only, sharing only, only that tab, so I won't be seeing what you're doing actually. So that's okay, okay. like your that's, that's, so that's good. Talk to me, um, talk to me, class. We we know about um, four stages in compilation. Please, I need us to not one person. I need 
four different i need one person to name the four stages i need that's five different persons one person to name the four stages in an orderly manner then four other persons should state to explain what happens in those stages and as you as the person is doing it, if it's wrong observe him call the person to order so just do that while you're doing that let me let me cook some soup here <laughs> Okay, we have Stella's hands up. So Stella, talk to us. Hey, can I talk? Uh, Stella, the first stage is the first stage. The first one is the preprocessor stage. The second stage is the compilation stage. The third stage is the assembly stage, and then lastly the linking. Okay. So sorry about this. So you said the preprocessor, pre, sorry about that, preprocessor. I hope you're using test. Yeah, 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 sure. Then the compilation, if I hear it correctly. Yeah. And what? The assembly stage. The okay. assembly stage. And then the Assembly linking, lastly. And what? The linking, the, the link card, the last stage is linking. And I just put it like this. It should have appeared. So. This is a processor stage. Is nobody observing anything there? The, that means you are, I believe. It's uh, for. Pre-processing. Okay, she said pre-processing. Okay. So she said these are the four stages. Who was the person that answered that question, please? Am I this call? Stella. Stella, okay. Uh, all right. And what happens in the professor stage? Professor stage. So let's not just. This is not a YouTube video you're watching, right? So I can't be talking and then you'll be watching. This is the class. It has to be interactive. If you if you plan to come and keep quiet and watch, then go to YouTube. There are plenty of videos there. <laughs> you sit there and go and watch for hours, minutes you want. So this is the class. Let's interact. Let's do some strategy that will uh, convince me that uh, we we've provoked you to remember what you read or to better understand what you read or to know what you didn't know. You know by you participating. So what happens in the preprocessor stage? What happens in the compilation stage? What happens in the assembly stage and the linking stage? Because all of us wrote this uh, project. Someone's hand is up, it's raised. Oh, I thought I saw your hand raised. So what happens? The first person take the first one, preprocessor, preprocessor stage, and then what happens at the compilation stage? What happens at the assembly stage? What happens at the linking stage? Let's be real with this stuff. Um, Mr. Bonaventure, your hand is up. Yes, we have um, uh, Yes, so the pre processing stage is the very first stage. This is where the compiler goes through the codes and starts doing the expansion. So all of the comments are being taken away, and then all of the macros are expanded. All the all the the preprocessor directives you gave, like all the standard files, start, files included from the standard libraries, are being expanded, and all the macros are also expanded. This is what happens in the preprocessing stage. So, in in summary, it, it, it kind of looks through the, your code, and then takes what is important for the next stage and leaves the rest. That is how I would say it in in Lehman, in Lehman's term. Hmm. That's that's beautiful. <laughs> Can I add to that? 
Yes, sir. Uh, please go ahead. All right, sir. So I think it takes the code and include it in the header file to see if uh, the code we have written is included in the header file. So if that is done, then it take it to the next stage for compilation. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yes, please. I'm waiting. Just don't wait. Um, compilation. What happens there? Who is there? Anybody that wants to help us with the compilation state? Not you again, Bonaventure. Okay. All right. We need another person. Let's let's talk. Let's talk. Let's talk. Um. Is it uh, or let me uh, okay? Uh, all right. Okay. okay, there it's take it from preprocessor and interpret it. It reads through the code that is it, it takes over everything, try, try to interpret it at compilation stage and pass it to the assembler. You read through all the code at the same time and pass it to the assembler. Let me put it that way. Can I can I add to what he said? Okay, you can add. At the compilation stage, this is where the um compiler breaks it down to object codes and um mm. converts it to um breaks it down to machine language because as um when we write the programs write it in human understandable language so it breaks it down to object codes and then come sends it down to the assembler okay okay so any other addition or objection Uh, I don't really agree with um, the break it down in the compilation period. Okay, what's your own um, addition to um, that? Com compilation period, what I believe compilation period is just the part where the um, the C program or the ID will just go through the code, go through um, the included the, the preprocessor goes to the included file so the compilation you just go through the code compile everything at once not check for fault or anything for now just just go through everything check for faults check for all those things tax based and just run everything at once once like that so it's not in the assembly um process that's going to convert it to um assembly language do you get that the that the my um that the computer understands Okay. So what what is the okay? Let me let me just ask you this funny question. So okay, let's let's go back a little bit up. So what is the uh where is the uh people says so uh people says output stored? As in what kind of uh, what is the file extension? What is what kind of file extension will you get as an output of a preprocessor after passing through the preprocessing stage? Does anybody know that? I know that when you fully, yeah? I think it's dot i. Dot i i i. Dot i. Thank you very much, Emmanuel. So, okay, if the preprocessing is dot i, what is the compilation stage? Anybody? Not you again, Imana. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Not you again. Anybody else? Okay, Stella said dot O. Another person. Dot O. Dot O. Okay. 
Does any other person have an objection to that? You guys said it. I don't know as well. Okay, Manuel, were you going to say dot O or something else? I'm thinking of dot C. Dot C. Okay, Emmanuel dot C. Okay. So, let's see. I'll just assume that we have, um, so let me put it here. We said, I'll leave it here just for reference, dot C. Okay. Um, so what happens in the assembly stage? Anybody? Come on, let's talk. Hello. To yes, Lorraine. Good talk evening. Yeah, good evening. How are you doing? I'm fine. Um, okay. uh, at the assembly stage. Yes. The the file that I was gotten uh, from the compilation uh, compilation stage. That's the dot o file, the object oriented uh, uh, file. Code file. Where, you, I was where is the O file gotten from? From, from the, the compilation yes, stage. Okay. It then in the assembly stage, the assembler uh, accepts it, then converts it to low level machine language. That is, uh, you know, the, this binary number zero and one, because uh, mm. the computer can only understand zeros and one. So at the assembly, uh, assembly uh, stage, the assembler will now convert that object oriented code to convert it to what to machine language code, which is zero and one before the linking. Okay. So what kind of extension file do you get as an output at that particular stage? Do I think know? it is a dot A. Dot A. Wow. Impressive. Okay. Dot A. So we are going to clear everybody's doubts today. So let me just close it here. So Lauren, thank you very much. So anybody wants to add or subtract from what she said? So Lauren, that's A. That's for the assembly. Okay. Hello? Yeah, I can hear you. I think it's dot S. Dot S. Okay. Uh, small letter. Yeah, so Ezekiel dot S. Let me just I'll shorten your name to Ezek. Sorry about that. Dot S for assembly. This is the way are you using the board right now? I'm not using the board. Um so for the last stage, Lincoln. Any other person? All right, guys, I'm ready. Who wants to say something about Lincoln? Okay, just to clear your doubts concerning the, the file extension questions that I asked, the only thing you guys got right was the pre-processing stage what? file extension. Yeah. Nobody got the compilation stage file extension. Okay, just before Topman um, carries on, so I'll just give you the file essential for each stages. So preprocessor stage take the dot i, that's correct. The compilation stage take dot s, hmm? then assembly take dot o, then the linking stage is the final one where you get a dot out. That's the default, the default um, file that you get a dot out or something or a.exe for um, Windows. Okay, so top man, fire on. <laughs> <Like that. laughs> you can make what your you research say, and get one. Um, people what you just said, you say uh, compilation is dot what dot s dot iu. Yeah, so I will just, can you, okay, I'll help you type it in the in-call message. Better. Let us yeah. say. This, <laughs> so, this, that, this is why I like uh, us participating. You, you could just answer that question straight. And you think you. 
you are communicating, of course, you are communicating, but you just, <laughs> you have to start in the short time memory before you know it. It's got slow. So, and you should have your uh, writing materials by you, or you should have your device coding alongside. Us. Um, I mean, do something that will make this class uh, um, a, 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 an impactful one for you. Okay. Here we go. I want to write a program. I want to write a function inside this file that adds two numbers. Right? The popular function you know. So what's the first thing I should do? Please, somebody guide me. Somebody's guiding me now. Your hash include your header file first. Okay. So I have a header file named PLD.h, and that's the one I want to use. Next, you declare your, your, entry point. your entry point. Your entry point. That's uh, <laughs> so much. You might know what I'm trying to do. <laughs> I'm trying to be funny right now. Wait, yeah. Is it function or what is this? Let's let users user to the file. This is this one of my best topic. This is one of my best topic. This is one of my best topic. You guys should come down. We are going to have fun. This is my phone, man. This is the castle of fun. If I don't want this guy here, you what I want this. I want a journey here. <laughs> and you do Stella. the compiler is my friend you know like the stop man so you know he's not uh, you know me angry you see he wants to complain you see that it's me use my fingerprint so ah is this top man okay okay compile it for him great answer in fact i, I can use those wicked compilers those have in war where in western all of them in fact i want to i want to bear them i want to use them let's see what happens Okay, that will be later. Let me do without them for now. If I want to use them, I, I need to come and put the comments. No, those guys don't look for comment now. They only complain when the comment is not um, in the format that they expect. So uh, it's better than look for comments. And okay, so I'm writing a file that I want to able to add two numbers. So I just give, give it a, a, I just tell it, a, um, Okay, let me not leave here. Let me not use here until let me just declare two variable and uh, say is equal. Uh, at last, I, 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 I enter your book. You enter the is equal A and is equal B. If you want to try to try it on your computer, that's what will happen. <laughs> but I'll try it, yeah. You see, we got have different results, and I'll tell you why. You just, you just enter how, how, about, how about return type? And when we are coming, we are coming. So I want to print F, print F, say, um, percentage, ah. Uh, I plus percentage I equals percentage I. Now uh, I want to give you the first variable. If you don't understand, just take up. Don't worry. Print E, the content of the variable E, and the content of the variable B, and then go there and print the addition of content of the variable A and B. Yeah, some of them. I think this is cool. I don't want to have a return value here. I don't want to have a return value here. So um, it's not my fault now. So now I want to have a, a let me call this one. Let me let me leave Stella out of this first. Let me call this a, let me call it add. Add. Okay. Uh huh. So here we go. I want to have uh, my main function here now. Uh, is it go? Okay. And then, uh, of course, uh, I I like to ask Stella here, the first person that attended the question. 
she rushed and take that very first one so that uh, <laughs> he was he was thinking she, because it's too simple but she came back here and said adding the other one stella is very very very, very interesting uh -huh. so i'd be able to, i'd like to have you here again <laughs> What is happening? What? Check out them and pass Ah, I I'm not expecting them. But please type your code in the incoming. Let me see, please. Uh, uh, sorry, not, not everybody. If you have for code, then type type in the code in the message. Let me well, see. Don't worry. Just just go on. I'm just trying to figure out something. I don't think code them and pass But they okay. should come on. Okay. Um, I know I'll call them, but I would have been here. Mr. White. <laughs> that guy is something else. All right, so I want to call the function I wrote up there. I want to give it to add five. Let's say three, two. Is there anyone here who does not know how to write a function that has two numbers and call it in the main function? Is there anyone like that here? Man, then enter the code though. Then you enter the code. What is this? <laughs> That's the issue now. What is happening here? What is happening here? Yeah, That's what is happening here? Okay, at this point now, I want to unshare and share my entire screen. Right? I was sharing a particular place. I want to share my entire screen right now. So I will stop sharing first. And then um, I'm going to share my entire screen. <clears throat> when you can see my screen, you confirm. Say hola. Yeah, yeah, yes. All right. So uh, that's the program. Just, that's the program I just wrote. And this is my terminal. So I want to uh, now see how whether our program will run. And Mr. Bed, I want to call those headers of this castle of headers. What do you think? All those big dead guys are very stubborn. Call them, call them, call them. Come on, take, come on, do your work here. Let's see. Take everything. Let's try. Warrior, what we wear, we are for whatever is for now. Yeah, that's yeah. You find the smallest fault. I hope I'm very correct now. So the name of this file you can see here is add, add num.c, add underscore num.c. Watch my emas editor. <clears throat> All right, so I will add it here. Uh, please zoom your screen. Oh. They, they've started. Oh. They've started. Ah. <laughs> they've started. Oh. <clears throat> you make me now start having big, 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 big things here. Where is it? Options, options. Somebody remind me. Where can I find any marks? Yes. Ah, the more. Can I, did anyone search the option? Default font. Set default font. That'll be save options. Customize your marks. It should be here now. New options, save options, top level, what, what, what. What is happening there? Control plus does it work here? Control plus does not work. It's working now. Okay, it's working. It's working in my terminal. Control plus is working in my terminal. What's not working in my? Is this too tiny for you to see? I no, I will. I will manage it. I'll manage it. Let's let's go. Let's him, try. Try, please. try control shift plus. Control shift plus. Yes. Control shift plus. 
You don't work. So I, they should, they should be able to see. Okay, so we should go on like this. See, so my terminal is um, bigger now. So I, I want to call this. Um, um, uh, you know, I, you know, you know, zero not O. What? That zero not O. The flag. Oh, to thank you very there. much. Thank you very much. Okay, so let's see. Um, what, any complaint? There's no complaint, no. You compile. Yeah. Is it a compile? Stella, we are compiling. Let me list. <laughs> I have a header file called pld.h. I'm using Windows, so it, it added the uh, um, dot .exe to my executable file. If I, if I don't want it, I could go ahead and uh, rename it and say, I insist that name is add. And if you want to do that, it will still put some asterisk in the ad. Right? That's Windows for you. So let's run our file whether it runs where. 3 plus 2 equals 5. So you printed well. Now look at Windows. I did not add new line here, but it's added a new line. <laughs> that's Windows for you. I don't know whether it happens in other people's system. I don't know. It's added a new line for me. So that's that don't be surprised. Like it's a normal thing that I've experienced. I've not had any line, but yeah, you had it for me. It does that. Like it call it it uh, it makes my bar script executable by default. The moment I just save it, it's, it will be green colored and executable. I don't need to be doing change mode. That's what I've experienced here. Yeah, once more some few other things to so that yeah, I'll just explain it so that so that um, it doesn't look so strange to you. But um, you don't want to mess with a learning system. It will do exactly what you ask it to do. <clears throat> and not even help you or define anything. Okay, so our program run three plus two equals five. Three plus two equals five. So what happened here? How did this rubbish make sense of the compiler? How did that's the question. <laughs> that that's the question. <laughs> <laughs> so someone is even here. <laughs> so I've not even include stdio.h. What happened here? What happened here? Can we see your PD, P, PLD dot H, um, Ada? You are a very smart young man. Yes. Now, let me go ahead and call another function that does not exist. And ask you to add five and um, three. In fact, I want to print the result because this that's what is going to be able to print the result. So I say print F um the D and I close that. I say okay. Let me just say five plus three, five plus three. I'm putting the video myself now. Five plus three equal to percentage d and then i pass this as the variable from which it should uh, get the results so let's see how are we able to add these numbers will it work i will go and compile again using those elders as well too uh -huh. so i'll save this go to my terminal here call back that command that is in compiling it and compile again let's see Ah, no complaint. Ah, that's wonderful. So yes, my comp you can see that is add dot ESE now. This is the one. Uh, but I don't want it there, so I was doing what I did before. MV. And of course, you know, if you go and rewrite the other one, this guy now, with this command I'm doing here now, it it will now go and form a new file. And this uh this environment does not allow two files with the same name. So it will now go and overwrite the content of this one and save here. That's why MV is used for rename. It's not actually renaming. It's moving something into something. Or moving something into somewhere. You know, if that place does not exist, it creates it based on your specifications. Okay. So list again. We have add. So let me run it. Add this. Okay, now it's now it has respected itself. It's, it's not printing new line again. It's mad that it's not printing new line. So let me go back and put the new line. Uh, just I want to put a new line after 
yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to put the name of my function. So my function will bring the new line, line five here. So backward slash. Uh, I'll save it. I'll go back to my terminal That's and compile nice. this. No backward. One slash, right? Oh, one slash. Oh, thank you. Enough. Those editors would have, editors would have caught me now. So I uh, will compile this again. And I will still go and do that renaming because I don't, I don't want to do that ESC there. Yeah. So I will run it again. So the first line prints three plus two equals five because the function has been defined to print I plus, uh, percentage I plus percentage I equals percentage I. Then the second line prints, I was the one that gave it the string five plus three, but I, I didn't give it the, I didn't give it this. I gave it something that looks like a function, but now in capital letter, right? And it's not the function add I use. It's not this function add I'm calling. To prove that, let me change the name of this function to um, sum. Right, I'm call here, I'm calling I'm call this function sum. So I know that I'm not calling the same function sum. But I'll save it. I'll go back and run this thing again. I will do the renaming again. Show you the content. That's it. So I run it again. So sum, my function sum is summing two numbers. Is something capital R is adding two numbers again. A D D. You see that there's a standard library function that adds two numbers. You know. We put an venture is you can tell us. So somebody rightly said that we need to see what is inside my P uh, L D dot H. Let me use the I to open it this way. <clears throat> P L D dot H, where are you? I don't have any of such function prototype defined here called add. Or oh, look at this very well. Look at this. Look at this. Take a very good look at it. Take a very good look at it. First, I have my include guy. And I told the compiler that anywhere you see Ezekiel, what I mean is int. <coughs> Are you seeing that magic? No magic. <laughs> the compiler, I know it don't have sense. But anywhere you see Ezekiel, what I mean is int. So do that. Okay, this is VI. Oh, father, I'm using emas command VI. I have VI my right. I'm using emas command. Look at this. Just link it. Wow. Okay. I told you, when you see Bonaventure, I mean return. And you see Stella, I mean main. And then you see Abeldo, I mean void. So, the computer cannot read. He does not know the sentence you're making. All he knows is the code, the underlying code. This int calls a code, calls is something else in their language. And the compiler is able to transcribe it into that thing that it is in their language. So because I'll say that this thing is the same thing as this thing, the compiler will see this thing as int. That's why what we have here was int A, this line three. What we have here is int A and int B. What we have here is void. That's why that was why it not return anything. Now, I, I didn't have to include STDIO because inside this PLD.h, I have in like that thing you can see. I have said put STDIO.h. STDI put it here. It's there. So when you call PLD.h, it's carrying STDIO.h already. I don't need to add it here again. Now, I, I'm showing you several things at the same time, but I'm going to break it down. I'm going to break it down. Ah, time is short. I'll, I'll see how far I can go. I'm showing, you, I'm showing you different things at the same time. I'm showing you both a function like macro from line nine. I'm showing you um, um, define uh, directive. These are called preprocessor directives. Preprocessor directives. Let me write down. Let me write down as a comment. Yeah. Oh, VI. You're not friendly at all. I'm very friendly. So they are called pre processor directive. The grammar is not too big. I think it's literal. Preprocessor. 
directly progresses of what happens before compilation starts there are things that will be wrong with your code it will not even compile why because at the preprocessor stage a fault was found so it could it could it wouldn't move to the next stage it wouldn't move at that point it's, even, it's not even the we, we just say it's the compiler complaining but it's not it's the preprocessor itself because it has not passed it to the compiler that's why I, this is where I start. I begin to appreciate LAX. If you are using something like code blocks or code or to code C or something like uh, yeah, something like code blocks or code C or some of all these IDEs, uh, integrated development environment, you will not know what is really happening. You will not even know that the file that is executed is not the file you wrote. It's another file called executable. You won't see it. You just run your file, run automatically. It will compile automatically. It show you shows you the result. So that kind, if you're using an IDE, it is, it is capable of printing to the console. When there's an error and it isn't to compile because the preprocessor directive like mr bonaventure says it, it will come here and look for things that are code and look for the ones that are not code so if i if i added those uh, betty comments from here say to do this to do that to this 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 the purpose the preprocessor stage will not take off code because this is not our business you know you take it off it's not our business it was low battery sorry <laughs> It's not a business. It takes it off. It takes it off and then does a couple of other things. It does not say who is this guy. It does not say, it is the I will say who is this guy. The include literally means include. Include this other file. If you say who is this guy, it will go and find the guy because of the, the, the double quotes I put here, which means find it inside this same directory. It will go and find the guy and go inside the guy and say, yes, what is your problem? You know, something is supposed to be here and it's not here. It will not find it like that. Okay, so it's here, eh? It will not include it. Now it will not be put in stdio.h. It will be put in the content of stdio.h. In the sense that it will come here and see that okay, this thing because it will find this thing when it goes to here. Say what is with f? I don't know what with f does though. Okay, let me take it again bit by bit. It gets to this point. It says I greet you. It passed. It comes. Say what is that do? What, what is this? Then it just sees that okay, this guy has it too. You now go here and check. So um Abiodu. So Abodi means Abodi is something that's void. You now ask what is void. Uh now you understand what void is. Yeah, so it will pass. It knows that you're supposed to give anything you want to give here. Anything you want to give here. It comes to what is Ezekiel. In the first part of the header file. What is it? and this file file will define it to where you defined it. You know, and then you see that uh Ezekiel is int. You know, it comes back, it passes. Now, when it gets to print F, you say, What is print F? It goes to header file to check for print F. Header file will direct it into it, it assesses the content, the content, and there's nothing here defining print F, save that there is a header file here that could that contains what print F is. It will not go inside this header file, which does not write it. So it's somewhere. It's just somewhere where we can assess it, somewhere global. So it, it the compiler knows how to assess it. It now assesses it and say, okay, this is what print F does, you know, and come here and do what print F does. Just the way it will come here and say, we will say some, some, this is what is some. It will now go back here and say, okay, see some here. You know, I didn't declare this prototype here because I defined the function inside the same file where I wrote the main function. Okay, I just, I just showed you how to use some preprocessor directives. Remember, this class is not this class. This class is not. Uh, it's not about um, how how well you understand this class. These are classes used to have up here. This is what you do with what you learn. What you do with what you understand. How well you can use what you understand. So it, this should provoke you to make a little research, further research. You know, I, I, as I, I would like to I would like to bring plenty of questions in your mind. Leave you with plenty of questions and try to have them answer now that you're curious. Now that the answer will stick and they'll do something practical with the answers you get. <clears throat> okay, so the, there are several preprocessor directives. Once you have your hash, that means you're directing the preprocessor. It's, it's a direction, it's, it's, it's an instruction. And that instruction should happen before compilation. That's what we mean by this thing I wrote in line 17. This is a comment, right? This is me. I should have used my board, but I choose to write it here. So it's not it's not doing anything in this code. It's not useless in this code. I'm just trying to tell you something. 
Okay. So that's what this guy is. That's what, that's what they do. They give you, they give you direct. They, they, this thing means direct things on what should be done before the code, source code, will be compiled. So when you put hash, you're telling them before you compile this code, go and check the out. As a header for yeah. When you put hash before you compile this code, I have defined Ezekiel. It's not nonsense. It is int. Now look at line ten. This is a macro now. A macro functioning like a fun like a function. I could have another macro defined here that has the ability like you normally we have macros like this. Uh, okay, let me put another line here. Mm. I'll call this um, macros. Of course, the macro can have to be a macro. Uh, let's say, um, um, let's can someone give me a constant, please? Any constant? Pi. Pi. Thank you. So in, in, in C, it is it is uh, it is um, conventional to use capital letters so that you don't mistake it. Now, if I had used small letters, somebody will be looking for function somewhere. So what is this now? But we are programmers and there are conventions and there are standards. So any programmer who sees this thing, anyone who programs in C very well that sees this thing that is in capital letter, the person will not suspect that it's a function. He will not start looking for a function prototype somewhere. The person will know that I'm talking that this is a macro, you know, a macro defined with uh, some processor directories. So uh, pi, let me call it a, um, how did I spell pi now? Pi, e right? Yeah. yeah. Good. So, what's the value of pi? Three point one four. Three point one four. Yeah, three point one four to two point seven. Ah, uh, okay. Now, once I have done this thing and save, let me receive this post. And this is this thing is saved now. Anyway, I call pi in this program because period of is included here. It will. It will automatically. Let me see. I could perform like any any. I don't know. There might be people who don't like mathematics. I would have done some calculation that uh, requires the use of pi. So you see that the, our pi will work excellently well. Our pi will work excellently well. So this is a macro. I, I know you can imagine what will happen, but just not to assume that all of us understand what will happen. Let me define another macro called. Uh, um. Um, speed. Let me call it what? Speed. Speed. Uh -huh. no, no, let's do something simple. I want to go simple. Let's see. Let me call it N. Let me take N is equal to 10. Okay. Um, okay. Mm, let's save this. So if I go here and ask this guy to print. Output F here and say print. Why is it having to Print F. I said print. Um, as the D. Um, plus the D. Uh, I, I'm sure by now you are not the. Uh, nobody is asking why you're using the D. I'm sure. But you know, you know, in this particular case, they do the same thing. There's actually a difference between them, but in this particular case, they're doing the same thing, right? Maybe I should let us brainstorm. After now, I'm going to ask you what's the difference between uh, person with I am. No, no, now that time, now. That I, now. Okay, we have about 39 minutes. Yes. Maybe we, I, I will take a pause. I will ask, we'll find out what exactly is the difference between person with I and person with D. What can D do that I cannot do, you know? So you, I shall say that we are doing practically here to find out. But let, let, uh, let's let pipe low for now. So, <coughs> so I want to do percentage D plus percentage D equals percentage D. And I hope you know that uh, it must not be only variable that we pass here. <coughs> and so the first percentage D, I want to say N. I want to give it N. The next percentage D, I want to give the number. So n is supposed to be 10, as we have defined. Let me now give it a number, let's say five. 
and then I want to see M plus five. It was not be variable that you pass as a, a what the uh, the format specifier should print. So the first one we we'll go and print. We we'll go and see and print the content and print what L really means. The second one we we'll go here and see five and take five. Integer. Let's see whether this works or not. And then the third one we we'll go and add n and five. Let's see whether it works or not. Doesn't work. And I've learned something new. Okay, so I want to close, I want to save this butterfly and close it. Um, so I've I've done like four things inside here, but I will, I will take it again. I will explain. Be five different things about four or five different things about preprocessor that is happening here. I have told you one that's happening. Right? Okay, okay, no, there's no point. I mean, I'll really talk about it. They include, you know, define inclusion, including files. You've seen that one clearly is happening. <clears throat> so let me save this. I'm mean, going quit. So I want to compile that program again and see whether that would be error. Okay, an error now. So someone talk to me. What is wrong? What is wrong? Am I still in this call yet? Hey, what happened, knocked out? What happened? I'm not in the call. <laughs> What went wrong? Why, why didn't it work? Oh, I'm not even, I've not been here. I'm doing something else. What's happening? What's happening? What's happening? It, this code refused to compile. Um, because we define n to be 10, um, we're changing the um, value of n. Did you change the value of n? I heard it not. Say, because you don't put your. Terminator. I, 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 I want to say that maybe, maybe macros requires different format specifiers instead yeah, of yeah, yeah. HD. Okay, so which one do you have in mind? Do you have any particular one in mind? Maybe I, but I'm not sure. <laughs> All right, I don't mind trying that. This is not the macro per se. This is the macro. Like it just, it just, it doesn't. I'm, I'm. There's something I'm thinking right now. Uh. Uh. Well, let me not conclude. Anyway, let's go. Are you sure it's not this elders that is complaining this thing? Let's see. This is the. Really. So is it adults? Also of adults. The, the equals two is not needed. Where? In your header file where you define the macro. Ah. Yes. Thank you so you much. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> so why why is this guy compiling? I want to print error for me. I want to compile the header file. <laughs> I don't want to print. Are you serious? Yeah, nah. <laughs> Very interesting. Compile that file. What do they want to run? Yeah. <laughs> okay. okay, thank you. So the equator is not needed. Yeah. Thank you for that information. Uh huh. So like this now it knows. So the second okay. argument you will take the value of the first. Uh yeah. We are good, we assume right? that the anything that you passed after it is, is the value of value. what you are defining. Right. Yes. Right. Let me call those errors again. Come on, compare my file. Oh, no complaint again. Thank you so much. Yeah. I don't like having that exe. So I'm gonna move. Um. 
add.esa to show video add yes add uh just to show you that everything is t what you expect three files one executable so it prints okay i've not added a new line this print sorry let me add a new line here but, but that's clear enough huh? so and in the support you to add me like for me what's happening now probably is a thing with git pass i don't know is that nobody nobody is uh lining to be on the unit with git bash s when i found out that it does the same thing yeah all right so it says three plus two equals five for this uh line 11 for line 12 it says five plus three equals eight you've seen that before now because we define the macro n to be 10 it says n and it's not 10 something something close to defining the variable but the reason why they use uppercase letters in c is so that your fellow programmer will know that it's not a variable it's a macro it's a macro not a variable okay okay let me go back to that uh guy and explain uh some things that are happening there or some things that happened there the question that comes I've, we've talked about include files include the uh, file file what 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 including files now the processor directive to include files we've talked about the one to define define give something a value if it's not there give it a value right we've defined these kinds of giving a value we've talked about the one that works like function i could write the one that gives that device numbers one that prints together what we did here was say if we said define this if you put add and give it any two values we'll put a space and say it should add those two values that was how we we'll call add five comma three here it added these two right and then uh, we now put the header file here instead of including it in our main program we'll just put it here so imagine we have up to seven programs seven files in this same directory that needs to be compared together that needs to have this header file we can afford not to put them we just put only prg.h and they will compile without error now the next is um let me take this off because it's not Stop really man. Yet. yes hello can you hear you i'm not going to shoot your shot okay i want to ask a question um so, line inside your header file from line yes. four to seven yes uh, what's the problem between line four to seven and uh line 10 and 11. You no know, on that line four to seven you are using no on line 10 and 11 you are using capital letter for the mic macros yes uh four to seven are they not also macros they are they are but i am not using them as macro in per se in fact they are not macro <laughs> they are not they're not they're not because uh macros are are found either globally or in, within the block of code this is me mimic this is me hiding the main thing that is needed hiding a keyword now this, i choose to do it like this right i just there is no point i mean nobody wants to do this except just experimenting i want to write c language, c language. but this is just to show how that it is possible to tell i mean to remind you that we are the ones that tell the computer what to do the computer is very intelligent but does not know what to do until we tell it what to do so because it has been told what to do in the definition of this keyword but when i say that when you see this thing this thing means this keyword it will carry it out so i chose to do it like this i mean i've not seen any program with anybody within this kind of thing i've not seen any program the only time i saw it was in the video while i was learning you know the youtube video i'm not anybody so um I, okay I, I am not, yes so i are saying if this line 10 and 11 fight side to write it the way you you wrote uh line four to seven like i'm using small letter instead of the capital letter pi it will still work it will still work okay thank you very much work. thank you 
just to work. But when I say with convention, I'm saying that just for us to identify that is it because somebody may mistake it for a variable. You know, this n now I could come here and say is it n, is it b, or declare a variable n, and I'm calling the variable here. But the C programmers, for us C programmers, not the compiler. The compiler we know for us C programmers. I if, I, if I'm looking at your code and I see capital N, I will suspect. Or because I will suspect that you mean a macro. If I see small letter, or I will suspect that you mean a variable. You know, and you may not appreciate this because all the codes you're writing now, all the codes you're writing now. Okay, this is good. Now you may have written codes that, yeah, you may have written codes that require up to thirty lines and more than you may have. So when you're reading that kind of code, you start appreciating these things. How someone will not confuse you by naming, giving a uh, a macro, a lowercase. You should not, not take time for you to now find out, ah, this is a macro, is not a variable. So it's just a convention. It's not that it's not possible, it's very possible. You can, you can. So I was trying to explain um, what now? Okay, I've explained, with speed of light, I've explained function like macro. They will they are they behave like functions. I've explained macros itself now. Macro they they contain they hold some values. They hold some values, and then um, um, okay. Now what will happen if I take off these guys? Let me ask please. What will happen if I take off these two guys? Somebody answer. What is happening now? Okay, I don't want you. I, I just hope, I believe I'm seeing the call. <laughs> what will happen? You want to jump in and say this aloud? What will happen if I take them off? The first two lines. Yes, and the last line. N nothing will happen per se, but but then the, the include guard. Um I can't remember now, but if if what it does is that if these macros here are not already defined, the include guard says define them if they are not defined. But if they have been defined before, that it just helps to define it only once in the micro in the compiler. That is what I'm trying to say. So wow. so if you remove if you take it out, it will still work, but it will keep adding uh will, will I say redundancy now? in the compiler so okay can you <laughs> can you explain this in a way that uh, someone that was a uh, that was um, a footballer yes. and read agriculture agri science in school but decided to join alex <laughs> we understand it that is the, that is the problem <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so who wants to who wants to do that <laughs> <laughs> Mr. White, do you want to help us? Mr. White from call two. Your phone money white. So which call again? <laughs> Are you scared? You are every year Python class. You're learning. You're, you're learning React. You're learning HTML. You're learning CSS. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So let, let's let, let's confirm whether it's correct, right? Let's confirm whether this thing will work. Right, so I'm taking like this off. But should I leave it? Should you just, should you just go with what you said? Nobody is talking. That means you agree with him. Nobody is talking. Okay, there's no point trying now. Mm. <laughs> so uh, those assignments. Try find out in what case do we now need it because i wanted to create such a, a circumstance i hope i'm still in this call please yes you are so i wanted to create a circumstance where that uh include guy would be needed if what he said is right or he was gonna say it to us you know if what he said is correct uh we would have created a situation where that include guy would be needed and create a situation where we could do that, they look at even with plenty of things in our header file. Okay, uh, I'm going to push this to gates in case you want to access it later on. Um, 
Uh, any questions, please? In summary, we've discussed include guards. <laughs> we've discussed include guards. We've discussed uh, uh, um, there, there are several of them. There are several of them. Yeah. In fact, there is one that can suffix for this or suffice for this. this suffice for this that can do what this guy is doing. Yeah. There are some more. There are some that can work like uh, like the if statement you use in in um, in C programming. The if s statement. You know, a, a lot of okay. It was not just called and question of bar scripting. You know. I could go to the, yeah. So there are several, several. There is on diff. I mean, I could come to my main program and do this definition here. Uh, make it global. Global means putting it in a place where it is available to every block of code that follows. So if I put, if I had done this thing here, it would be fine. No. Okay. Fine. In, in a way. In a way. Is. It is uh, global in a way here because it is in the main method H five. So if I call it here, it will do. Uh, it will print out. Okay, watch this. Let me use the on diff. The on def oh, and on what now? Come on. Okay, so I, I'll say a hash on diff. And the N. So I'm saying undefine it, move everything that was there before, make it null and void. So after doing this, let's go and see whether our N will agree to print the game. And so I will close this file. Save and close. And I will try to compile, but this time I don't want to take my format file off. So I'll call it a, let's just call it N. And that the exe so it refused to compile, and this time it's saying undeclared identifier is reported only once. That means uh, it actually saw n undeclared. So I'm using it for the first time, it does not recognize it again. It's so only in this program. If I call it in this block of code, it will come because it's global in this way. If I call it here, it will, if I write more and then some more functions, I call it, it will be it will be available to it. It's only within this block of code. I mean, from line 10, uh, within line 11 and line 6 to line 16, that it is no more available. So I do I, you can do this when you don't want you don't want the value as it is again. So I can come and give you the new value here now. So fine. Let's see whether it will clash with the one in the PLD in the PLD.h file. See what happens. That's in a box. Uh, global variable and local variables. Okay, now this is a local macro. It, it was global, but I took I took off the global value, and I want to give something local. I'll say five. So now, if I say n is not equal to five, it means that this n should print uh, um, five plus five equals five. But let's see whether it will work. So uh, I'm going to save this, and I'm going to try to compile again, and I'm going to call the name n five. They compile even with all of those others. So it should be n5.exe. That's it there by, by the right. And now I'm going to comp I'm going to run it. It's printing well. And then for the last line, this is for the line, this is for line uh, 13 of my code, of my source code. This is for uh, line, the, the, the instruction at line 14 of my source code. And this is instruction at line, um, 15 of my source code now n is 5 no more 10 so in this program now because the the, the the program is executed left to right down up to down you know all right so when it gets to this point n does not have any value it gets to this point n now is 5 it continues to say to add this program n will be 5 until you redefine n until you redefine n you need to undefine it and define it again so that, that's it. We've touched now. There's there are several more things, a couple of more things to know about um reporting directives. But in summary, it's just about 
about the process, the process that happens, what happens to your source code before it is compiled, you know, the processor stage, compilation stage, assembly stage, and uh, linkage, what happens before it is compiled, that's what the processor is about. What Hello, Talkman. Yes. Sorry for disturbing once again. Sorry no about problem. that. Don't so sorry. I want to ask, um, for line 11 and 12, yes let's say um that's line 11 is not there okay. will it still work that's considering right. that you've already defined that uh uh n in your header file won't will there be any conflict you are tempting me to remove the include guards <laughs> that question is tempting me to remove the include guards and see what happens but let's look at it will it still work let's find out so I'm trying to compile. I refuse to compile because we are, we are talking about preprocessor here. That is, this guy is at the preprocessor stage, so he must he must execute before the program will compile. If it does not execute, the program will not compile. So he's telling you that A is N is redefined. That means it's illegal. You know why? That's what those guys. That's what Mr. Benavidez was trying to uh, 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 um, um, explain. I mean, please. Now the, the five players of A, these guys here are the guys that are stopping you. Am I correct? Someone correct me if I'm wrong. But these guys here, they stop, they stop. It is illegal to define anything that is already defined. So we say if not defined, then defined. So this if not defined, I've seen it that oh, it's defined. So it can't define it. again. So it, 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 the, 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 the things that are here can appear once. Um, if, if I had multiple programs, right, there are programs that has the ability to call this header file twice. And it's here. You know. So something that has been defined, you don't try to redefine it. The only way you want to redefine it is to undefine it first. And then define it again. So there are programs that okay. For example, if this program now is calling includement.h already, assuming it was okay. Let's let me explain this one abstractly. No, I'm gonna stop here. I believe you understand because you didn't ask me a question at that point. You understand what includers are doing. I believe you do. You can come make a search. You don't. Let me stop here. So at this point, we've we've uh, covered much about uh preprocessor direct to use what they are what they do and there are a couple of more things to know about them you want to go into more details you want to practice with them you want to practice the use of certain preprocessor directives you may you may if you're free just look at your note again before the next project will appear tomorrow and do what you can do about it probably tonight so any questions so far I want to push this to git you can assess it if you want to later on um, you could um, ah. you saw with me or okay i don't like pushing the general files to git so the ls has to do so Okay. Ah. My script too. Don't worry, I'll, 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 see. I'll have to save. Mm. Okay. Please, if you have a question, you can ask. If you have a question, you can ask. It's all right. I have a question, Mr. Topman. Okay. Is 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 not on preprocess source actually? Oh. Right. But uh, is 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 from this uh, link list we are, we are doing now in Code Nine. Okay. 
so I, I just want you to mention the concept this thing for some so I can now do research. The 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 first question in the advanced tab in the advanced section asks us to write a function that prints some strings before the main is executed. So, so and, before the main is executed. Yes, that is that is even uh, let's say let's say this is your the, the program you wrote here now that yeah. adds to not to integers you know they, they 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 it is until you call them in main that's when they execute but this yes. one runs even before main starts running yes. so i just saw a code i copied it like uh, uh, and then sent but i don't actually understand that they there was something like this okay void um void on that double underscore attributes double underscore brackets into another bracket constructor then first bracket closes then they, they print then the other one is just printf statement for the for the for the string that will write that is just what is there so i wanted yeah. to just find out what, what is that is is it like the attributes is it like uh, maybe macro or something what is it underscore something something attributes right yes void yes let, let me let me let me type it on the that guy are you talking about the particular um command that stops that allow you to push with where you have an on the unused variable see, see try that to no. remove it and test yeah. it, test it with the mendel c5 if it shows the error or use variable that uh, then do not uh, did you put it as a parameter inside uh, as an argument uh, no, inside the no no no, no 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 so so the so the way you want, so the the way the function the, the code is that the 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 function prototype is void underscore on that that is double underscore attribute okay Followed by another double underscore. Yes. The, there's 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 no space in in the form of par, uh, 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 parameters. The parameter is now constructor. What is inside the parameter is constructor. All right. Yes, but after that also there's now first as if as if another function is called you know a function that is that is called that the name is first was called. Let, let me okay. type it in the in the list thing so so you yeah. okay don't don't type yet okay you can you can send it to me as message on whatsapp send it to me on whatsapp what oh, happened okay, is right. we, we are supposed to have um a linked little link list class linked list class yeah. and wow wow yeah we're supposed to have a link class and maybe it will be this week the, the, the way I even saw that test, I don't think I don't. I mean that that particular message, the the two the two messages, the two um, tasks in the in the advanced tasks yesterday. I, I mean in the link list, I don't think they are really part of link list. I thought I think that that. Well, am I still in this call? Hello. Yes, you are. Okay. Wow, well, we lost him. Okay, the time is 11 p.m. Because saying we are supposed to have a class on linked list either this week or next week. Uh, yeah, I'm supposed to take a class on linked list. And we probably need to take um, two meet twice or so, or once. And then um, all the classes you've had this week, I'm planning a code drive special meeting so that we, we can code we can take the LLS problems and solve what we've learned so far you know and and what is saying now may take the next two weeks or three weeks also attend to it because if we learn that if we have that class this week then maybe by next week we attend to it but if you have the class in the next two weeks then next three weeks remember we don't meeting deadline on this call is not our it's not our it's not at all our reason for it's not at all the reason is spread our PLDs. It's not at all. Um so um 
we are not in haste to uh, to battle any political discuss any concept. So um uh at this point I want to draw the curtain. I want to draw the curtain. Thank you all so much for coming out. Thank you all. Wow, someone has someone is recording this. Someone has been recording this. Do you have the time to watch all this since you record? <laughs> good day. So good night, though. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. If you have other questions, you can drop it in the group. Drop it in the group. Let's talk. <laughs>